Tell me, Frank, have you been indulging in what I call Mrs. Weaver's weakness for social informalities? In 1963, Arthur Lowe business. began his lifelong association with the radical filmmaker Lindsay Anderson. Still, false teeth can be better looking than the real thing sometimes. What do you think mine are? To Arthur and to Lindsay, their association was very important. It was a very exciting time, uh, Lindsay Anderson's sort of free cinema period, you know. And uh, the uh, these were films of a type that nobody had made before. They were they were quite unique. Arthur, I think, rather liked that that he had these two sides. One, he could do Coronation Street, Dad's Army, and be very family orientated and then this other darker side to him and he loved doing the Lindsay Anderson films and you know in Britannia Hospital he, I think it may have been his last performance it was his last performance for Lindsay anyway it's actually it, it all it makes me very sad to see that and he's again brilliant in it just one scene one speech and quite amazing they wouldn't listen to me you wouldn't listen to me. This scepter dive. This other Eden. Demi Paradise. This precious stone set in the silver sea. This blessed plot. This realm. This England. <laughs> Arthur was a card carrying Tory. <laughs> and, um,. Lindsay was very left-wing, I suppose, but um, it didn't really matter. I think Lindsay just adored him for the work, and um, as far as Lindsay was concerned, there was no finer actor than Arthur. Arthur's output was phenomenal. Besides his legendary sitcoms, he worked on feature films, television dramas, children's programs and adverts. How do you do, my dear? What a beauty. Oh, I do agree. Marvellous, shy thinking. Well, I wouldn't be quite so bold as to say that. And then he opened his mouth and roared. Oblong! It's Thursday now. You want to arrest him tomorrow, Friday, eh? That's right. Mm, it can't be done. Would you care for a little hanky-panky, madam? <laughs> They're all at it. Munching hanky-panky. When you've been working that long, uh, and you and you make it quite late in life. I mean, he was like 46 or 47 when he became a, a, a big star in, in Britain. Uh, that you're terrified it's all going to go away. So you just keep working. I mean, you just... He, he kept saying that to me. He said, just take it, whatever it is. You know, I'd say, oh, I've been offered this. I don't know if I want to do it. Oh, just take it, take it. Hot on the heels of Dad's army, Arthur was to have yet another success with ITV's new sitcom, Bless Me Father. Three and six, sir. Three and six. Oh, I've forgotten my wallet. Have you ever missed It gave Arthur a chance to move away from his image as the pompous little Englishman. Ah, a thousand thanks. Although Arthur's career was flourishing in film and television, his theatre work was a different story. Joan's insistence that they only tour together meant a compromise for Arthur. The rubbish he appeared in and the not very good plays he took on tour didn't do him a lot of good, but he toured in these plays round the provinces to give her a part in the play. For instance, at that period he was offered a, a very interesting line of parts by the Royal Shakespeare Company, which would have been marvellously pre prestigious to do. But uh, because there was nothing that he could be working with with his wife, he chose to turn it down. Joni's performance was old-fashioned, so there was a gap. There was a professional gap between them. It's very difficult to tell whether Arthur was aware of this, and uh, because he loved her so much, would turn a blind eye to it. He was he was too good himself, I think, not to have known, but he would have covered for her. You know what happens if we stay awake talking? <laughs> One of us always has to get up and make a pot of tea. <laughs> Not essential, of course. Just something we've grown accustomed to.
Perhaps a couple of plain biscuits. <laughs> I know where the tray is, if that's any help. Arthur was still working non-stop, but the last seven years of his life were increasingly dominated by a serious sleeping disorder. It turned out that he was suffering from a very rare condition called narcolepsy, which induces sleep when it's not required, and when it is required, can't be achieved. And so it presented itself in a way that um, in the restaurant physically it could look as if he was drunk. I'd see him start to go, and I'd sort of like come in hard on a line, you know, sort of wake him up, really, you know, and you'd find yourself compensating a performance a bit just to, just to keep him, get through the scene and get to the end of it so he could have a kip, you know. In the last year of his life, on a bad day, he could be as asleep as much as he was um, awake. And uh, it became very lonely for my mum in that respect. Mm. She sat with him a lot while he was asleep. Four weeks before he died, Arthur presented one of the awards at the annual BAFTAs. He wrote books and li 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 <laughs> he wrote books and lyrics for pantomime <laughs> as, well, <laughs> as well as production numbers with Cyril Ornadol. <laughs> I wish I'd read this before I came. On April the 15th, 1982, Arthur Lowe died after a stroke. On tour with Joan at the Alexandra Theatre in Birmingham, he collapsed in his dressing room between performances. I had a great sense of relief and happiness that he had died still working. I expected to, to find Joan sort of in deep distress, I went to the theatre to discover that she was on stage rehearsing and she had insisted that the show should go on and she says that was what Arthur would have wished. A lot of people expressed surprise that Joni wasn't at my father's funeral but where he was a romantic she was with little sentimentality. She was not a believer and to her his body was not the important thing. The thing that was important to her was was the show. <laughs> right. What Arthur succeeded in doing in his marvellous lifetime's work was really creating one single character. He represented every pompous man that ever existed. Rather drunk for safety. He brought happiness and laughter to many thousands of people. <laughs> I do really think that should go down in the history of Arthur. Get me down! Don't panic, Mr. Manrin! Don't panic! <laughs> 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 